What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a super special episode of the Backside Ground Balls podcast. We are lucky enough to have access to the most famous person in college baseball right now. Maybe not the most famous person, but at least the most famous person in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Alex Madera, the, the superstar of the North Carolina Tar Heels and with the game winning hit in the, what was it, top of the 10th, right? Yes, sir. Top of the 10th against LSU to knock down the reigning national champions. Alex, thank you for doing this on such short notice. I mean, thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Of course, of course. For anybody that is a frequent listener of the podcast, they're going to notice my setup is different. I am currently at the Performance Academy, so you might hear plyo balls, you might see balls, hear balls getting hit off the tee, so just ignore that. We're focused on the quality content. But Alex, I want to start by asking you, I was lucky enough to be up there this weekend. How was the atmosphere? Obviously, Carolina fans are as loyal. They love your program. They're out in every weekend, and you guys get a ton of good atmospheres. But bringing in LSU, that fan base, what that brings, great atmospheres. Talk about it from your perspective as a player. Yeah, I mean, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, the fans were into it every single pitch, every inning. Um, I mean, both fans, too. You know, you heard a lot of LSU chants, a lot of Go Heels, Tar Heels chants. I mean, it was just the atmosphere was was insane i mean there was there was nothing like it and i've been to obviously a lot of phillies games and you know a world series game and all, and all that and those atmospheres are electric and i mean this was up there with it yeah i think that was the perfect thing was the mix of lsu fans which are loud they love their tigers they start their chance when things start to stir up obviously in high high pressure situations they love to support their guys but Carolina fans didn't back down. And I know that was something that Coach Forbes that you had mentioned in the broadcast. Obviously, Vance had mentioned after the big game on Saturday night. Like, it seemed like everybody was kind of mentioning that, like, they, you guys felt like it was an advantage on your end having the crowd be as amped up and jacked up as they were. So, like, talk about how much of a competitive advantage it was just having so many people there to back you guys and make sure they're supporting you guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, obviously that's huge. You know, you want to have obviously home field advantage at the Bosch anyway. I mean, we just we've been playing so well here. And I, I think the, the fans are, are one of the biggest reasons. I mean, they're they're always into the game. They always get us going, you know, the big moments, you know, they're there to cheer us on. And I mean, no matter what happens, honestly, they're they're always there for us. And I think that's the biggest thing with the, the UNC fans is just they always have your back. And I mean, they're always ready. I'm going to say it because I know you won't. People call them a wine and cheese crowd. This weekend did not it, it did not partake in any wine and cheese. It was all <laughs> all support and loud, and they were fired up for each and every moment. So let's talk about your part and the part that you played in such an exciting weekend. There was so much good baseball. Gavin's hit. Vance's really good game on Saturday with the two home runs. But coming out of the weekend, your season – Felt like it was on the line. You guys were down against LSU. You had an opportunity. You guys were scratching and clawing. Got the sacrifice bunt. Talk us through that at bat. And then obviously how it ended was not the what we looked for. Um, but it was, I mean, that was just unfortunate how close it came to hitting the bag. Just talk us through the bunt and obviously the tough matchup against Gage Jump there. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, right before that at bat, you know, I talked with uh, Forbes and he pulled Gavin over and, uh, you know, he said, you're going to sacrifice bunt here. And, you know, all you got to do is, is get it down. And, you know, that's what I was trying to do. I mean, I've done it hundreds of times before. Um, you know, I was, I was ready for that moment to, to get the bunt down. Um, you know, obviously I didn't, I got a couple of, couple of tough pitches, took one that, that I probably should have attempted to bunt, but attempted another, that one went foul. And then, you know, with two strikes, kind of just just told myself, you know, you know, just try and don't try and be pretty here. Like, just just get it in play somewhere. It doesn't really matter where it goes as long as you get it down. And you know, probably chase the ball. Honestly, it was probably up after after rewatching it. Um, but you know, it was trickling down the line. I thought thought maybe it had a chance, and then you know, just trickled foul. And obviously, myself, you know, I was pretty pretty angry with myself and. You know, thinking, you know, I just let my teammates down and, and after everything, you know, they've all worked for and how hard they we've all been working. And, uh, you know, I get back in the dugout and all the guys are just, you know, saying, Colby's going to pick you up. Colby's going to pick you up. You know, he's got you here. And, you know, luckily, um, Colby came through in the clutch like he's been doing all year. You know, got a huge single for us, knocked in the, the tying run. And, you know, then everybody was coming up to me saying, you know, I told you he's going to he was going to come in clutch and you're going to get a big at bat later. And, you know, they weren't wrong. Yeah. I mean, talk about first off, did Coach Forbes tell you? Because we know like 
Tommy White, Coach Forbes, and Gavin, and the umpire were all right there watching. How close did he say that was to actually nicking the bag? Was it less than an inch? Was it an actual inch? Because it looked pretty close. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was less than an inch. That's what they were saying. Gavin Gavin was right there running over there. He said it was literally like just this close to just hitting the bag and, and, and kicking off the other way. So, I mean, probably probably about, about an inch. Yeah, and that would have been one of the – like. We'll talk about the knock and the swing, but that would have been one of the more impressive plays in general would have just been how huge that bunt would have been, getting that down with two strikes. It's not easy to bunt 96 from the left side with a really good breaking ball either. Um, so that kind of sets you up for your at-bat. Obviously, Colby came through. You guys end up tying the game, taking it into extras. Um, Pence, Dalton Pence was phenomenal out of the bullpen. He looked absolutely electric, and he was punching tickets to keep you guys right there and make sure that game didn't get – LSU didn't extend the lead. Walk us through that at bat. What's the approach with gauge jump specifically, especially left on left in that situation? Yeah, um, I mean, before the game, working with uh, Coach Rizbicki, our hitting coach, a lot. And, uh, you know, we noticed a few things, especially especially against lefties that, uh, that I was doing, um, you know, pulling off a little bit too much, just, you know, trying to keep the front shoulder a little bit more closed on – especially on the the left on left breaking balls and making sure I'm staying in there, you know, trying to shoot something the other way, not trying to do too much with it. But um, in that at bat particular, you know, I knew I was going to get some fastballs. I figured I was going to get some sliders as well, but you know, I knew I was going to get some fastballs and facing a guy like him, you know, throwing 96, throwing gas on the mound, you know, you know, you have to be on time for the heater and, and you can't miss it. And, you know, I uh, fouled one off and, and swung through another one and, uh, worked it to three, two. And I was like, all right, you know what, at this time, I'm, I'm just going to sell out for a heater. I'm not going to try and do too much. I'm not going to let him beat me with the heater. You know, if he throws a slider, I'll probably tip the cap, you know, it is what it is, but sold out for a heater. He luckily I got it and just was able to punch it up the middle and not do too much. So this is a question. And I think, again, it kind of diverts from the conversation we're having about that moment right there, but how important is it to not divert from your approach and be able to trust whether it's the information, whether it's the conversations you're having with teammates, hitting coaches, anything in that moment, because so many hitters might be like, well, what if he throws a breaking ball? And then that makes us late for the breaking ball or for the fastball that we eventually ended up getting. How, how important is it as a hitter to be convicted in your approach and the analysis that you're going into that at bat with? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely the biggest thing. And, and I, I give all credit to coach Weir's Bicky and, and our coaching staff. I mean, with the, the scouting reports that, that they give us on, on the pitchers. Um, I mean, they're really detailed and they tell you, you know, exactly what, what you should be looking for. They tell you, you know, the percentages of, of what pitches they throw and, and what counts and whatnot. And, you know, he tells you against certain guys, you know, you got to you have to be on a heater like you can't you can't miss a heater. You got to be on time for that. And then, you know, obviously adjust to the off speed. But I mean, just being fully convicted in the approaches is, is the biggest thing. And if you start second guessing yourself, that's when you're that's when you're done. No doubt. And it's hard enough to hit 96 when you know it's coming. 96 when you're trying to hit everything else makes it 10 times harder. One of the things that I saw as I was watching the game um, and really since you've been with Carolina this year is just how calm in that moment you you were and you look my heart rate was probably a lot higher than yours was and I think I speak for everybody that's seen you um, and was rooting for you in that moment which at this point it feels like all of division three and division two and small college baseball was rooting for you in that moment talk about why you were so calm in that moment because they panned you a couple of times and I've seen you play enough to know like if you were getting worked up not that I've ever seen it very much but Talk about how much goes into being mentally focused and prepared and not making that moment bigger than what it already was. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it goes back to, you know, I can relate it to the the Friday night game against uh, LIU. Um, you know, I was on deck when, when Gavin Galler hit the, hit the Grand Slam, which was, I mean, incredible. He's just, that kid's a stud. Um, but, you know, I was on deck and Coach Weir's Bicky is just talking to me and he's like, dude, like the biggest thing in, in these scenarios is just trying to control your heart rate, you know, trying to slow it down, taking deep breaths. And, you know, I kind of once I got in there on on a Monday against LSU, you know, I kind of just that's that's what I was really focusing on. I wasn't obviously focusing on the outcomes or, or what was going to happen. I was just trying to slow the heart rate down, take some deep breaths and, 
you know, telling myself like, Hey, I've, I've been in these spots before. Like it's, it's nothing new. It's just another at bat and, you know, try and put the bat on the ball and a good thing will happen. I, I always say the biggest thing is to not make the moment bigger than it is. And the reason why we're able to do that, and I would guess you would speak for this a little bit more in detail, is how prepared we are and how much work we put in behind the scenes. Everybody, every high level athlete that you hear that comes through in big moments, it's like, well, I've been training for this moment for, you know, 10, 15 years. And this has been years in the making. And I've always envisioned myself in the, that scenario. How much of you of that success that you had in that at bat do you feel? was your preparation and was probably visualizing yourself when you committed to North Carolina before you even left Arcadia, I'm guarantee there was probably a part of you that said, I'm going to be the guy that gets that hit in that regional. That's going to take us to the next level. And obviously hopefully there's more to come as we get closer and closer to Omaha and your guys ultimate goal of winning a national championship. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, coach Forbes says it all the time, you know, it's about the process and, you know, he said it before the game a bunch of times, you know, this is the reason why you come to UNC to, to play in games like that. And, you know, with all the work that we've put in, you know, he knew we were prepared and, and everybody was ready for the moment. And I mean, I think honestly, anybody in our lineup in that situation would have got the job done. I'm, I'm confident in that and, and our guys. And, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to our pitching staff as well. I mean, they kept us in that game. They threw up a bunch of zeros. I mean, they were just dominant all game for us, which is, which is obviously huge. And, you know, I mean, I think it it takes a little bit off you when you when you know your 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 pitching staff is is that good and and how good of guys you got on the mound. You know, it takes a little bit of of pressure off you in that scenario too, because you're like, okay, like obviously you you want to get the job done and you know you're prepa- prepared for it. But you know, worst comes the worst, like our pitchers got our backs as well. Yeah, and that gives you so many opportunities to to potentially take the lead. Obviously, as the away team playing on your home field, that's a little bit weird. But when you know that Pence is going out there chucking up zeros, you're pretty confident that you're going to have ample opportunities to take the lead, and it's going to be on you guys to be able to, hey, we just got to get one across, and then we're going to head into the bottom half of that inning, and we trust that he's going to close the door, which I think, obviously, if you're fired up in the moment, running down first base, firing up the dugouts, again, analyzing it the camera pans to you like 15 times rightfully so because you just had the biggest hit um in in, for your guys team for this year and how much focused you seemed after the fact right not to mention left early almost made jump jump balk which was i'm assuming that was a play put on by by coach forbes and ran that to perfection which was just great because you're not caught up in the highs of the hit and then it was like Colby brings your stuff out. You guys seem to have like a moment there. It's like, we're not done yet. Talk us through that moment after the fact of like, we still got three outs to get. And yes, we trust that Pence is going to go out there and shove up a zero, but we still have to play defense behind him. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, you. I mean, you nailed it spot on. That's exactly what, you know, Colby and I talked about. Um, you know, obviously I gave him a huge hug the inning before, after, after he got the job done. And I was like, dude, like, thank you. Thanks for picking me up, blah, blah, blah. And he, you know, he comes out there and brings my stuff and he pretty much says the same thing. And then, you know, we get in the field and, you know, we're confident in our, in our pitchers and our fielding. And, you know, it's just just another inning. And, um, you know, we're just looking forward to, to making some plays. And, I mean, Dalton came out and did what he was doing all game, just pound the zone and, you know, make them force their way on and, and try and win the game. But, I mean, I it was pretty much just, you know, another inning from that aspect. Yeah, Dalton, I, I had so much confidence in Dalton in that moment just when he came out, established the strike zone early, and I guarantee you guys probably felt the same way, especially with how good his stuff is on top of him attacking, relentlessly attacking the strike zone. That's always a, a good combination to have success on the back end of anybody's bullpen. Let's talk about the other storyline here that's kind of been talked about a lot with you. Coach Forbes, after the game, mentioned that he has a soft spot for a Division three guy. Um, obviously, that's kind of been the storyline for you is a year ago. Um, you were playing at Arcadia. You guys were competing at a high level, top 20, top 10 program in the country. So you're playing meaningful baseball games, but not necessarily the magnitude of a historic UNC versus LSU matchup in a regional winner-take-all, Game 7 atmosphere. So talk about that road of going from Arcadia to UNC and so many people want that to be their story and want that to be their journey, but they don't see the hours and the effort that it takes behind the scenes. And I think that's the big storyline I want to hit with you is seeing what goes on behind the scenes. It's not just, Oh, I'm more talented. And I just went through the cracks. It's no, I I worked each and every day for this moment. So talk about that and, and how meaningful this moment was from a guy with your journey. 
Yeah, I mean, it was obviously. I mean, the moment was it was insane. You know, it was incredible. One of the one of the best moments of my life. But um, you know, getting to this point, um, I think it was just obviously hard work, dedication, and um, I mean, the biggest thing for me was just like believing. I mean, obviously, you know, you go to uh, you know, everybody has dreams out of high school to go and play Division One, but. You know, for me, that wasn't the case, and I wanted to go somewhere where, where I was going to play right away, you know, wanted to, you know, compete, and, uh, you know, I loved Arcadia, loved the coaching staff, loved the players there, so, you know, I, I felt like I fit right in, um, got down there, got to work right away, you know, saw, you know, took from the seniors, um, you know, they worked extremely hard, they were always in the weight room, always getting better, so, you know, I kind of looked after them, and, you know, some role models like Dylan, Dylan Towie, uh, Jeremy Sabathia, I mean, they just... They, they were they were huge for me and they, they really showed me what what hard work really was so you know I kind of just dedicated myself and thought to myself you know hey if I work hard enough you know maybe I'll I will get a chance to go play you know at the the, the next level and you know COVID was kind of a blessing for me honestly it gave me two extra years so I mean that was huge for me you know obviously when I was at Arcadia at first I probably didn't think that I would be in the spot but you know after getting two years of eligibility back you know it kind of made me work a little bit harder to be like, okay, you know, I really do have a chance at, at going and playing division one baseball, which I has always been my dream, especially to play here. I mean, UNC has always been a dream school for me. So just getting this opportunity has been a blessing. No doubt. No doubt. And I'll say it because obviously you're not going to be able to highlight a couple of times, but being lucky enough to be around you and see you, there were several times. And for people that don't know, again, it's not just it. Alex is supremely talented. That That's a major piece of the success he's had. But the work that he put in, there would be times where I would go, we'd give guys off for practice, um, and I would just go get my normal afternoon workout, and guess who's up there drenched in sweat getting after it, and walk up and be like, hey, Alex, what are you doing? Hey, just just working to get better. And that's how simple it was. And each and every day, you didn't hit in the fall that I was there. You took every rep at shortstop. If I wasn't hitting a fungo during BP, during our, I remember this specifically, during our fall fall game, I took a break. I was talking to a hitter about something with their swing, and all I hear from the field is, Hey, come on, somebody give me a fungo. Like every map ma- rep mattered to you. And again, that's the accumulation that leads to these opportunities that have been presented to you. And everybody wants that success, that Rudy success story. But like you worked so hard for this moment. And I think that's why each and every person, whether it's people at Arcadia, whether it's even opponents, respect and are not surprised by the success that you've had and the moment that you've had in here. So I know that's kind of more of a statement and a little bit of praise for you. It's not really a question, but I just wanted to insert there just in case people are listening and, and they're curious because they want to be the next Alex Madera. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. That means a lot. I mean, we talk about it here too all the time, you know, obviously every day just, just trying to get better. And that's, I mean, that's the biggest thing is just making sure you're working every day to get better. Whether that's, you know, in the weight room, just lifting weights, or even even if you're just stretching and getting treatment done, like you don't necessarily have to be doing something baseball related every single day, but you can get better in other aspects, whether it's the weight room or, or treatment. Like I said, you know, those are two huge components and just, you know, making sure your body's always ready. No doubt, no doubt. So looking ahead, obviously the ultimate goal is a national championship and, and you guys are in a great position to get there. Um, I'm not going to ask you to break down West Virginia and give us the X's and O's on what their pitchers and, and what their offense does, but talk about what you're kind of anticipating in a super regional atmosphere with another fan base that is very loyal and is going to travel and, and probably a little bit more close proximity than what LSU was, so maybe even more fans and more yellow, of course, we can get to look up the guns and see, see a little bit more yellow, but talk about what you're anticipating anticipating from a super regional this weekend in chapel hill yeah i mean uh from the baseball aspect you know coach forbes once again always says it you know we're just gonna focus on ourselves you know it's all about it's all about us at the end of the day you know just playing our game playing our style of ball you know that's that's going to be what what gets the job done not focusing on on the results and you know what happens in each game not looking up at the scoreboard just just focusing on ourselves but I mean, from the fan aspect, you know, I'm I'm looking for it to be just as loud as it was in the regionals. You know, I, I mean, I know the fans are going to bring it every day. And, you know, I'm just super excited to see what this weekend holds for us. I think definitely nothing but positivity coming from our end. Alex, we appreciate you taking this time to hop on and talk. I know you guys got practice. We fit this into our schedule. We've been talking about it for a little over 24 hours trying to make this happen. So definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this. And let's just put it this way. 
when you get another walk-off opportunity this weekend, we'll get you on next Wednesday. We'll talk about it some more and, and keep giving you some shine because you deserve it. You deserve all the publicity because of all the hard work you've put in to get to this point. Thank you so much. It means a lot. I'm looking forward to this weekend. Of course, of course. And I didn't I didn't bring Dane on here. to. I know you listened to the prediction podcast. I didn't bring him on here to defend himself for LSU. He claims it was a, a reverse jinx. So we'll just leave that as is. I know I know you're saying it. Um, I would have given you an opportunity to be like, Dan, what's up? Why are you picking against us? You're picking against your boys. Um, so definitely, definitely appreciate that. But Alex, thank you again. Best of luck. And, and we'll anticipate, hopefully, fingers crossed, long stretch in Omaha and a national championship for the Carolina Tar Heels. Yes, sir. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me.